We're in our final hour, and we are going to begin with nonprofit response to veterans in crisis. With us this afternoon, we are pleased to have Jeremy Stahlnecker, who is the executive director of Mighty Oaks Foundation. Mighty Oaks Foundation is dedicated to helping American military warriors and their families who are suffering from the unseen wounds of combat, such as PTSD. Also is Tony Coder, the executive director of the Ohio, Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation, a statewide nonprofit focused on the prevention of suicide across the lifespan. As executive director, he leads the charge to support community-based efforts in Ohio to reduce the stigma of suicide, promote education and awareness about suicide prevention, provide training and development, and increase resources and programs that reduce the risk of lives lost to suicide. Also, Jason Hughes, the program manager for the Temporary Assistance to Needy fa Families, known as TANF, the effort to supply suicide prevention programming to our youth, serving those socioeconomic disadvantaged children. Jason also serves as the liaison to the veteran community of the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation. We are honored to have Dr. Josephine Ridley, who received her PhD in clinical psychology from West Virginia University and is the Assistant Chief of Psychology Service, Supervisory Psychologist at the VA Northeast Ohio Healthcare System. Thank you so much and welcome. I am so, so thrilled um, that uh, Justice Kennedy, that Mighty Crow, Justice Stratton, and so many other folks have uh, come together to put this conference on. It is such a crucial topic, and we are just so grateful that we are able to uh, present to you today. I just have a couple minutes. Um, I want to thank you for the commitment that you all are making, everyone in attendance, uh, to the veterans and the entire community and the state, as you work to bring awareness and treatment and care to individuals and families across Ohio. Uh, my name is Tony Coder, and I am the Executive Director of the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation. It's never a job that I thought I would ever have or um, even want. However, um, a, few, uh, a few years ago, three years ago, my son, uh, about this time of year, um, called me one day and said, uh, Dad, I'm in uh, Columbus Springs, and I have... Uh, uh, I, I, I'm like, why are you in there? And he said, well, I, I, I tried to kill myself um, on Wednesday. It's a Saturday morning. Um, he sat in the emergency room for a couple days and uh, they fi uh, he finally was able to access a phone. And it was not something that I ever thought my life would uh, uh, bring. Um, so this, uh, when I was offered this position, I didn't know whether I uh, wanted to um, even work uh, in suicide. It brought back so many painful uh, times uh, with, with uh, Bryce and myself. Uh, but Bryce came to me one day and he said, Dad, what'd you do about that job? And I said, I don't know. And he said, Dad, would you do it for me and kids like me? So I'm here um, for uh, my son, Bryce. And as I have uh, been here about a year and a half, almost two years, I'm doing it for all these other families that I've got to know and to talk to. And, you know, they are now, you know, part of this organization. And I'm so grateful um, for knowing them. However, at the same time, I wish I would, because of the circumstances, never had to have met them. So um, we're losing five people every day on average to suicide in this state. We lose a, a young person every 33 hours to suicide in Ohio. Suicide's the le second leading cause of death for um, youth ages 10, uh, 15 to 24, but it's also the leading cause of death in Ohio for kids ages 10 to 14. 10 to 14. However, these are not uh, who are taking their lives most often in our state. Somewhere between 75 and 80% of suicides in our state are men over the age of 35. And while women do not complete suicide as often, women do have higher suicide attempt rates. You know, this issue impacts everyone and the strangest thing has happened 
since I took this job. No matter where I am, no, uh, when I mention where I work, everyone has a story. Whether it's a family member, a loved one, even their own struggle with suicide. I was uh, literally getting my car fixed and the mechanic asked where I worked. And he told me about his own sister's struggle who uh, had PTSD coming back from uh, uh, two tours in Afghanistan and was struggling herself. Uh, actually to told her about Dr. Ridley and the great work that uh, the VA was doing. And hopefully today she's getting help. You know, this, uh, this issue impacts everyone. We've got to be able to discuss it though. We've got to discuss this like, like any other issue. I remember when I was a little kid and my grandma would always say, she never wanted to mention the word cancer. It was always the C word. Oh, she's got the C word, she's got the C word. It was, it was almost, uh, you know, it was an unspoken topic. However, now we see so much research, so much um, celebration into survivors of cancer. And it was because that conversation started. So we need to bring this out of the darkness as well. You know, we need to be able to talk about this freely so that other people can get help. So that my son, so that your children, your siblings, you know, outside of clinician training, advocacy and coordinating entities at the local and state level, we have campaigns for all demographics. We have Be Present Ohio for, for young people as it gives, it gives youth uh, tools to maintain their mental health and, and wellness. We have the With You Here campaign, which is intended for young black men. We know that young black men have the fastest growing rate of suicide in Ohio, and we have to do better. So this campaign is intended to help open that conversation and help African Americans identify mental health issues and seek help. We need to do better. We also have Man Therapy Campaign, which is a campaign out of Colorado that helps adult men understand their own mental health. It helps them get a head check or, or an assessment and find, find help um, in their community. Now, I'll be honest with you, uh, Man Therapy is not everybody's cup of tea. It's a little bit crass. It uses humor. Um, it is based on evidence, so it's not something that uh, is just uh, you know trying to be funny but it's trying to get that to that everyday man, that everyday man who, you know, is, uh, who just kind of has a, a crass sense of humor or doesn't really talk about mental health or maybe even uses humor to cover it up. So we have that campaign. Um, we also have It's Okay Cognito trainings for clinicians, teachers, and the general public. And, you know, we're, we're also um, pushing a youth, re youth resilience program and, uh, you, uh, and suicide prevention um, building uh, program as well called Sources of Strength. Um, and one of the things that uh, when I first started was we built a suicide prevention plan with the help of Dr. Ridley, of so many, uh, some of you who are um, on this uh, webinar uh, today and at this summit. Um, but we, we, we saw that Ohio was the only state in the nation not to have a suicide prevention plan. So we met for six or eight months and we came up with a plan for Ohio that Governor DeWine introduced um, back on February 26th of this year. So with that, we wanted to focus on um, different systems, uh, healthcare systems, school systems. We wanted to focus on uh, helping coalitions and local communities that everything, uh, another priority is that it's data driven. Um, but we also looked at populations um, and we saw veterans are the population that we need to be helping. They're one of the uh, priority populations. So with the governor's office help and with Dr. Ridley and so many of the other veteran serving organizations, uh, we, have, uh, we, we included this in our plan. And Jason will be able to talk a little bit more about the governor's challenge and uh, what lies within that plan. So I wanna make sure that you understand that this is not something that is just near and dear to you. This is an entire state priority. So again, your work is valued um, across the state. So we work closely with the VA, the Ohio Department of Veterans Services, 
and other veteran serving organizations. And we are absolutely distraught by the number of veterans and active military members that we lose every day in this state. It's too many, it's unacceptable. And we have a veteran on staff, like I mentioned, Jason, who you're gonna hear from in a few minutes, who's working with veteran groups across the state to help any veteran, any family member find and get help. I also encourage you to visit our website, uh, www.ohiospf.org to see the number of programs and resources that we have to offer. Along with our programs and our coalitions, there is a veteran specific page where you can find resources, uh, you can, uh, there, there's a piece on adjusting to civilian life, other tools that uh, we have on that website. But one of the things that I really want you to consider today is to look at our advice page and it's under our get involved tab. So at the, at the top, you'll see get involved. Right under that is our advice page. And that'll give you a quick and easy list of warning signs of suicide and how to have that conversation. And I encourage you to look at it before you or a loved one is in crisis. I know with my son, I had no idea what to do. I've been part of the behavioral health system for 15, you know, now for 20 years, but 17 years I had been part of the behavioral health system. And when my own son came to me with a problem that he had a suicide attempt, I was absolutely paralyzed. You know, with COVID I've, encourage people to get a plan just in case because of general mental health anxiety depression isolation all those classic suicide signs we talk about but now we've added all of these other pieces covid job loss debt fear hopelessness so we understand how this can mess with somebody's emotions we know things are tough but we need to prepare I don't know about you, but you know, when I was a little kid, I grew up with fire drills at school. Um, everybody remember those fire drills? Usually the principal or somebody would announce that we're having a fire drill first off. So what do we all do? We got up out of our chairs, we lined up, we got into single file line, we walked out to the baseball field, the teacher counted us, got all the, uh, got all the heads counted, and then we went back in school. And we'd do it once or twice, and it became kind of a routine. There was no hesitation. And it was almost a joke how prepared we were uh, for a fire. But the number one thing I hear from parents is they call into our office or I get Facebook messages um, a lot is I, I, I don't know what to do. What do I do now? What do, what do I do with my child? I know where they're at and I, wish they had prepared just like I wish I had prepared. My son has depression, but I didn't, I didn't prepare for this. I never, it was out of my realm of possibility. Prepare yourself just in case. Get those closest friends you can count on to give you support. Carry the suicide prevention lifeline number. Understand where your VA is. Um, suicide prevention lifeline is one 800 273 8255, even if you put it in a piece on a piece of paper in your pocket, put it there. Know the crisis text line at 741741. Know what to do just in case it happens. Now, we never got a fire at our school, but we knew what to do because we had a plan. We were ready. The same with suicide. Have that plan to help you get out safely. Again, I wanna thank Justice Kennedy, Justice Stratton, Mighty Crow, and all of the organizations and individuals who've put together this conference. And I encourage you to create that plan and know that you are, and your work is a priority to the state of Ohio. I now want to introduce Jason Hughes. He's our program manager at the Ohio Suicide Prevention uh, Foundation and our veteran liaison, uh, Jason. Take it away. I think you're muted. Jason, I think you're muted. Or your computer volume might be down, I don't know.
Josephine, would you like to do this while Jason figures out uh, um, the, because I think he's still muted. So Josephine, would you like to? Uh, uh, sure, sure, I can, I can definitely um, share my um, PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to go as rapidly as I can because I know it's four of us squished into one hour and um, I have a bunch of slides. The only reason I have a bunch of slides is for you to have that information, not for me to go through them with a lot of detail. Um, obviously, I just want to give some really quickly some relevant veteran stats. I'm going to talk about what we do for suicide prevention in the VA and um, talk about how we're partnering and give you those resources. We are definitely treating suicide as a public health um, approach and that we really want to build community engagement in the VA. Um, here's some averages. Now, I know people have been talking about the number of suicide deaths for veterans per day, and it has been mentioned about how it went down from 22 to 20. Um, in 2017, um, based on the most recent National Veteran Suicide Prevention Report, it went down to 17.5. Now, one caveat, I have a little asterisk there. In the previous years, when they were reporting those numbers of 22 per day and 20, they were actually including um, individuals who were current members of the active military. They weren't just including, um, and they were also including in that um, uh, National Guard and reservist. And so now they're using the term more strictly. When they are saying veterans, they are only going to be referring to individuals who were previously activated for federal military service and they were not currently serving at the time of their death. Um, previously, again, it was current military, former reserve and National Guard as well as veterans. And so the numbers um, definitely are trending down. I have in parentheses what the numbers would have been if it was only veterans in that 22 and in that 20. Um, you can see that for the percentage of all United States um, suicides, veterans represented in 2018, 13.8%. So it is going down, but it's also because our veteran population is shrinking. The number of people who are considered veterans in the United States um, is, is shrinking. So you can see the numbers went from 9.7% in 2010 down to 8.0% in uh, 2018. This is a really good resource. I recommend that you go to the, um, the hyperlink that's in the PowerPoint that you have access to. You can get the National Veteran Suicide Prevention. It's hot off the presses. It was just released um, last week, as a matter of fact, or I think on November 12th. Um, so it has all of the, the most recent current data. This is, these tables are comparing 2005 to 2018. So the top set of uh, tables are 2005 and the bottom set is 2018. And this just breaks down the veteran suicide deaths um, by race. And what you can see is the 2005 veteran population was 20,820,000. Um, 20 million, roughly 20 mil million. And then in 2018, the veteran um, white population was roughly 16 million. Um, you, so you can see the numbers are going down um, in the veteran population period. Um, you can see in the top table, 2005, um, the majority of individuals who are dying by suicide amongst the veteran population are white individuals, followed by African American. And, and so on. So that's just to give you a little bit of a breakdown racially. Here's some key data. Um, the rate of suicide for women veterans was 2.2 times that of women in the general population. For men, it was 1.3 times higher. The average age for those experiencing the highest rates of suicide in the veteran population, male veterans was 18 to 34. Those with the exact count, when you just count the numbers, is 55 and older. And again, that's a larger veteran population, those who are 55 and older. 69% um, of all veteran suicide deaths did result from firearms. And I'm going to give you a little bit more detail on that in just a second. Um, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of veterans and civilians for, for suicides. So since 2005, the rate increased of 6.3% in the veteran population. So it's been trending up kind of consistently. Um, since 2005 for the civilian population, 47.1% increase. Um, for suicide rates for veterans, it's 27.5 per 100,000 for um, adults in that same age range as, as veterans, um, 18.2 per 100,000. 
Now, here is something that is really interesting, what we've actually found from looking at the data is that veterans who use VA services actually have a slower rate of increase. Um, the rates of uh, suicide increased 25.6% for veterans who no, actually use, use VA services versus 57% for those who don't. Um, you can see that the, um, the yeah. rates of suicide um, actually decreased 2.4% between 2017 and 2018 um, uh, for vets who use um, VA services versus those who don't use VA services. Are you guys seeing the slides? Is everything okay? I heard some talking. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to go fast. Um, in 2017, when we used that average of um, 17 veterans dying per day, um, six would, were actually receiving VHA services and 11 were not. And we cannot just try to reach those within our VHA walls. We need to reach veterans um, across our state, across our country. Um, again, here's some uh, 2014 data. Again, looking at how many were actually uh, receiving um, uh, VA care and where they were being seen. Many of them were being seen in VA primary care only and not in mental health care. And that's why I have that um, slide in there, just to let you know, it's a public health issue. It's not a mental health issue, it's for everyone. Here's our Ohio stats. Um, this again is our Ohio state stats. If you look at the national veteran suicide rate, the um, the total overall rate 32 in Ohio the rate is 27.3 so if you look nationally we're a little bit um, lower than the um, national rate um, when you look at it total in total for Ohio um, so our we really believe that data should drive our um, suicide prevention efforts and again this is just looking at the the majority of veterans um, suicides were when we look at the actual count, we're 55 and older, and um, most of them were using firearms. And here's a slide that really breaks down um, the percentage of non-veteran suicide deaths and what they tended to use, the method they tended to use versus veteran suicide deaths. And you can see firearms were used 48.2% of the time in non-veterans, but when you look at veterans, it's 68.2% firearms. And that makes sense, they're weapons trained. Um, this breaks it down um, across Ohio and looking at nationally. Again, Ohio veterans, 66.8% um, used firearms um, in their method of suicide um, compared to 52.7% of those in Ohio total. Um, and then the national um, average of 51%. So veterans tend to use firearms more often. Here's some anchors of hope. Um, and please, I apologize for speaking rapidly. I'm just trying to get through a, a couple of really good points for you. So from 2017 to 2018, the adjusted suicide rates fell among veterans from, with recent VHA care while rising among other veterans. And I will, of course, let you read the rest of that slide on your own. Um, anchor two, among veterans in VHA care, um, rates fell from 2005 to 2018 in those with depression, anxiety, and substance use disorders. So that's a pretty important um, set of information there. Um, our anchor of hope three is that in 2018, suicide rates decreased for specific veteran populations engaged in VHA care. And um, you can see there's quite a bit of detail and breakdown in that information as well. In anchor four, Anchor four, um, for our anchors of hope, the veteran suicide rate did not increase significantly between 2017 and 2018. And so there are some, some numbers there just representing 27.5 per 100,000 in 2018 compared to 27.3 in 2017. Um, of course, we are, it's definitely much higher than it was in 2005 where it, when it was 18.5 per 100,000. And here's our fifth anchor of hope. Oh, we are so excited that there is so much support at the local, regional, and national levels to implement a public health approach to not only end suicide in general, but end suicide in our veterans. Um, and we are grateful for the partnerships. So we have our national strategy for preventing veteran suicide. Um, 20 states have um, adopted the uh, Governor's Challenge and SAMHSA's um, partnership. 
uh, for the governor's challenge. We have um, clinical practice guidelines on the assessment and management of patients at risk for suicide. Um, and then we have PREVENTS, which is the president's roadmap to empower veterans and end a national tragedy, tragedy of suicide. Uh, that launched in June of 2020 of this year. Um, so our operational plans of action, our specific ones, we've got Suicide Prevention 2.0, which is going to focus on a nationally implementing and operationalizing um, a community-based and clinically-based um, uh, 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 method of approaching suicide prevention. And we also have something that called NOW. The NOW initiative focuses on enhancing and expanding what we have going on currently for suicide prevention, both clinically and in our outreach services, including safety planning and lethal means safety and universal screening. Um, I'm excited about our Suicide Prevention 2.0 because we are actually getting ready to create positions in every single VA. These positions will be community engagement and partnership coordinators. So these are going to be specific individuals hired to actually partner with local, national, state level um, agencies. They're going to combine with them to do postvention as well as prevention. And so we're really excited about these teams. We're getting ready to hire them across the board in our VA system. And they're kind of similar to our suicide prevention coordinators, but they're going to um, operate as um, a part of our postvention teams and our prevention teams in the community. Um, the NOW plan is five planks and 19 strategies. The five planks are lethal means safety, suicide prevention in medical populations, outreach to an understanding of the prior VHA user. We're gonna, we have something called Reach Vet as well, which is under plank four, which is a suicide prevention program enhancement. And there's a variety of of um, strategies you see listed under Plank 4 that has the most strategies. And then Plank 5 is just our targeted media approach where we're going to, do mo to, to use social media and um, PSAs and, and other means of reaching the general population. Um, again, you can see our community-based prevention examples and our clinically-based inter intervention examples, how we are combining those to really approach um, community and clinical interventions within, um, uh, in, in our partnership with the state. Um, the Ohio Suicide Prevention Plan, the teams are, are our wonderful group, um, collaborative group of community, municipal, military, and other stakeholders, um, including the VA. And we're providing technical assistance to support state efforts and to document outcomes and share strategies with other participants. Our community-based intervention for suicide prevention is, a, is this unified model. And again, you see our community engagement partnership um, positions that we're going to have, but you can see how we are definitely seeking to um, engage more, more deliberately with our communities. This slide just gives a little overview of what our suicide prevention coordinators do, that we have suicide prevention coordinators at every single VA. And what I love about them is they already are engaged with the community. They will come and speak for free at any community agency. Um, they carry gun locks with them. They will give those out free. They go to gun shows. They really emphasize lethal means safety and they do so much. They're responsible for um, creating the high risk flags in our com computerized patient record um, system. And that high risk flag really just makes our clinicians know to pay more attention to our veterans who have a high risk flag, meaning that they're at, at elevated risk for suicide. Um, we are required to have four appointments uh, within 30 days of um, activating a high risk um, flag. And we do caring contacts. Our um, suicide prevention coordinators do caring contacts. We have the REACH VET program, which is a statistical program to analyze and identify individuals at risk for morbidity or mortality. And it's all cause mortality, not just suicide. So anyone we believe is at elevated risk, risk gets additional outreach from our providers. Here are the numbers that um, Tony was sharing earlier and so many people have shared. There's our Veterans Crisis Line. Yes, you do press one. And if you're not a veteran, you don't have to press one. Um, and uh, it's staffed 24 hours a day. And I've had the pleasure of meeting individuals who work for our National Suicide uh, Prevention uh, Veterans Crisis Line. And they are amazing individuals. You can also text 
specifically for veterans, there's a specific chat, uh, text line that's separate from the 741741. Um, this one is the 838255. And we also have a veterans crisis line on that they can chat online. Um, they can go on the computer or on the internet and chat. Um, we're a part of the Military Suicide Research Consortium, so we do partner. And you can go to these links using the um, PowerPoint that you can access on, um, on uh, this uh, conference website. These are wonderful resources that anybody can use. You don't have to just be a part of the VA to, to use these resources. Um, we, of course, you can um, tweet <laughs> to get to our, uh, our Myrick. Um, and uh, here's the Suicide Risk Management Consultation Program. And again, you can use the, the hyperlinks in the uh, PowerPoint to get there to get information. And our uh, hashtag, never worry alone, uh, for our Myrick, which is um, our research um, kind of consortium within the VA. Uh, and here are some more references that you can, um, again, click on the hyperlinks and go right there, including coaching into care. Here's my favorite um, VA created apps. When the VA creates apps, they are free to everybody and they are used around the world. And I use even in my private practice, Virtual Hope Box, and these are awesome apps for you to share with your um, veteran population. I hope I didn't take too long. This is the end of my part of the presentation. Um, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to speak and to represent um, VA. I'm very proud of what we do in the VA and I'm so grateful to Justice Stratton and Justice Kennedy for setting up this amazing conference. And I wanna thank um, Tony Coder, who is our amazing leader in Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation, just a little powerhouse team that does so much great work for Ohio. And I'll hand it over to Jason. Jason, Jason, we still can't hear you. Still can't hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jason. Don't know. Perhaps you could try logging off and then back on. Let's see. So we should hand it over to Jeremy then. Jeremy, you want to take it up? Go ahead. Sure, I would be happy to. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. You're uh, a little quiet. You're just a little bit quiet. Okay, we'll fix that right now. How's that? Is that better? Much better. Okay. Uh, my name is Jeremy Stolnecker. I am the executive director of the Mighty Oaks Foundation. I have a PowerPoint I will share with you because we have not seen enough PowerPoint today. So let's see if I can help, help that out. All right. So uh, again, yeah, as everyone has already said, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Uh, this is incredible. We're a national organization, so we work all over the country. And uh, I'll tell you that most states are not doing what Ohio is doing, uh, at least not to the degree and with the coordination that you are. So thank you so much for doing it. And uh, man, I wish more folks would follow the example that you're setting. But uh, we have the privilege of serving um, the veteran community. I'll get into that in just a second. I served as a United States Marine. I was with the 1st Battalion, 5th Marines based out of uh, Southern California here at Camp Pendleton. Um, as a part of 1-5 and the 1st Marine Division deployed to Kuwait and then into Iraq in 2003. This is my platoon. I was a, an infantry platoon commander off to the far right there. If you can see that, that's me long, long time ago. Um, but uh, that's our platoon in Baghdad. We were actually at the uh, kind of the other presidential palace. There's two. There's one at the airport. This is on the Tigris River. And uh, we were there uh, in Baghdad for about two weeks. That was our final destination, our final stop and uh, retrograded home after that. I, I love this picture because of what it represents. Um, and for many, many years, I had this hanging over my desk after I left the Marine Corps and uh, went on with my life. I served actually in ministry for a while. And I had this picture, I would look at it proudly and, and thankful for what I had the opportunity to do. Uh, because of my own struggles coming home, I, I largely walked away from my service. It wasn't something that I was not proud of. It was just something I didn't want to talk about or deal with um, because of some of the other issues I was struggling with. So it took me about 10 years. And 10 years after I came home from Iraq, I met with about 15 of the guys in this picture kind of a, a small reunion, spent a, cute, a few days together in, uh, in Colorado. And uh, I had always looked at this picture with great pride. And as I sat with those guys, I learned that many of the young men in this picture 
um, deployed back to Iraq and uh, were killed in Fallujah. A number of them had committed suicide, taken their own lives, and uh, you know, a slew of other personal relationship issues and so forth. Um, and, and that was the first time really in 10 years that I realized that putting the uniform back in the closet at the end of my service was not the end of my service, that I needed to continue to serve. And really that's what this conference represents is continuing service. And I appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, it means so much to me. In fact, it means so much that I uh, left what I was doing and got involved in the work that we're doing now and uh, grateful to be a part of it. You know, you've seen these numbers. Um, we've talked about these all day long, but there is a need. You can see the suicide rates in the veteran and active duty community. Uh, we also serve the first responder community and you can see the numbers reported uh, in 2018, we're told that in the first responder community, there's about 45% underreporting. So this is not the full picture. This is just a starting point. Um, just about a month ago, the Department of Defense reported publicly, and, and this article is in a number of places. I first read it in, uh, in Fox News, um, that the suicide rate in the active duty community this year uh, during the period beginning the end of March uh, through, I believe, July is a four month period that uh, the active duty suicide rate had increased by 20 percent. Um, the Army said their active duty rate had increased by 30 percent. And a lot of that is due to, you know, what all of us are dealing with right now. So there is a huge need, of course. Uh, suicide is not the only need. Um, that's the end of the line. But there are so many other issues that our veterans are dealing with. And we as an organization don't specifically deal only with suicide, but with um, you know, the various areas that our veterans struggle. Uh, this is who we serve. Again, very quickly, we serve military veterans. Um, that's how we started out. When we started the Mighty Oaks Foundation, we were serving only combat veterans. So a very narrow group of folks uh, that has since expanded. We now have uh, a number of active duty military members that will attend our programs, uh, law enforcement officers, firefighters, and EMS and then spouses of the above categories, understanding that we need to continue to serve the families as well. And uh, grateful to be able to serve all of these communities. And I'll tell you how we do that again quickly, just so you have an overview here. Three core programs that we focus on. Again, we're a 501c3, a nonprofit. We raise our money privately to run these programs. And these are the three programs that we focus on. The first one is what we call legacy programs, a one sentence description, but this is what we spend most of our time focused on. A five day program for men or women focused on moving forward in the face of military life and trauma. We have four facilities across the country. One is here in California where I am, another in Texas, one in Virginia, and then our fourth is in Ohio, which I'll talk about specifically in just a second. But uh, these facilities serve as the place where we run our programs 30 weeks every year. We have one week programs, so that's 30 programs. Uh, close to 1,000 students will come to one of those programs over the course of a year. We've had, um, that's where we are now. Uh, we've had just over 4,000 in the last 10 years. We've built up to where we're accommodating the numbers we are now. But uh, they'll come to one of those facilities across the country. Um, again, as was mentioned earlier, to remove all obstacles, we cover the cost of the program and the cost of travel, moving folks from all over the country to one of those facilities where they can get help so that they will get help. Uh, some of those are active duty, some are veterans. We've had a tremendous open door with the active duty community as well. And we'll spend a week talking about trauma, talking about what it is, what it is not, <laughs> um, the fact that it has happened, but also the fact that it does not need to control your life. Uh, unlike so many other programs, we're non-clinical. We work with clinical programs, but we are non-clinical and really talk about purpose and talk about uh, legacy. That's why it's called the legacy program, what you're leaving behind and work to help men and women move forward in the face of that. That's our legacy program in Ohio specifically. Uh, and this is, I could talk all day about this. I won't, but um, uh, uh, Mr. Straker, the Straker family, Bill Straker, who just passed away last year, um, a World War II veteran saw the statistics on veteran suicide. He lives in Ohio, lives in Zanesville. His family is, is in Zanesville still and said, someone needs to do something. He had a partnership with the Columbus Zoo and with the Wilds in Zanesville and uh, reached out and said to the Wilds, if I build out a facility on your property that you can use, will you also let the Mighty Oaks Foundation use it for their programs? And uh, he did. He built it out. Their family built it, managed it. 
And um, in partnership with the Columbus Zoo and specifically the Wilds, we have six sessions a year, about 250 veterans and active duty service members a year will go to that facility and uh, we'll work with them. It's been an incredible, incredible partnership. Um, every part of it, I've done this for a long time. There's always problems. <laughs> there have been no problems there. It's been incredible. Um, part of that is just the folks in Ohio. Part of it, a big part of it is the staff at uh, the Wilds uh, there, but a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Again, I could talk on that for a long time, but I won't. We also focus on resiliency, and this is where we spend much of our time working with the active duty community. We'll speak at resiliency events. As you're aware, the four pillars of resiliency as published by the Department of Defense, the body, the mind, there's the social aspect of resiliency, and then spiritual. And we specifically engage with the spiritual aspect. We speak to about 50,000, typically, not this year, but typically about 50,000 active duty service members a year trying to get out in front of um, you know, the bad decisions that often lead to suicide and broken relationships and the rest. That's our resiliency effort. And then advocacy, this is new for us. Uh, just this last year, we've really leaned into uh, representing non-clinical uh, uh, veterans service organizations like ours uh, to the government and to folks who make decisions uh, really in, in an effort, I guess, to bridge the gap between the VA and other government agencies and uh, non-clinical, non-government programs, um, just trying to give veterans another opportunity, another choice of, of who they can go to for treatment. And we've had great success. Uh, the VA, uh, by the way, has been uh, an incredible, this year has been an incredible help to us in helping us navigate some of these things. And uh, we've developed a great working relationship, which is funny coming from the veteran community because the VA, for whatever reason, uh, typically, <laughs> typically has a bad reputation. Um, but man alive, the folks at the VA have been uh, so incredible in helping us navigate this and doing our best to figure it out. Um, and so we spend as much time there as possible. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, this program is free to anyone who is a veteran, active duty service member, uh, first responder, or a spouse. Get on our website. You can find out much more information about us. You can also apply for the program there. We cover all the costs, uh, so there are no obstacles other than five days of your time. And we've seen uh, just tremendous success in, in these areas and would love to, to help anyone that uh, would like help or would like to reach out to us. My email address is there as well. So again, very quick, but thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. And thank you for what you guys are doing. Very much appreciated. How about now? Yes, we can hear you. Hooray. Third time's a charm, right? Yes. Okay. So, hey, thanks, Jeremy, for that excellent presentation. Uh, so, as Tony said earlier, I'm, my name is Jason Hughes. I'm the uh, program manager and veteran liaison for the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation. Uh, I served the United States Army for 22 years and I retired in 2019. Uh, while serving in the military, uh, I deployed for Operation Noble Eagle, supported the Homeland Response Force mission. Uh, serve as a master resilience trainer, a brigade sexual assault response coordinator, and a suicide intervention officer. So Tony mentioned earlier about some of the programs that we have at OSPF, but one of the newest programs that we have is based on our AmeriCorps grant that we were awarded this year. The name of that grant is Serving Ohio Veterans. So the mission of the Serving Ohio Veterans is to equip and empower military members, veterans, and their families, and those serving with them the knowledge to identify the warning signs of suicide, confidence to ask about thoughts of suicide and the ability to refer mental health providers and competence in military culture. So this is a five-year grant that involves five AmeriCorps members. The AmeriCorps also is Serve Ohio. Um, and they will be serving as veteran liaisons across the state of Ohio. So these members will be connecting with the Ohio Army National Guard and military service organizations across Ohio to promote greater understanding of awareness of mental health and suicide prevention. So starting in January of 2021, we will be advertising these positions on our website, the OSPF.org, and also my AmeriCorps website. So if you know anyone who is interested in these positions, just go to my AmeriCorps and they can create a profile and they, they can register for the position on that website. Uh, also, the, I'm a member of the Ohio Governor's Challenge Team. So the Governor's Challenge Team collaborate effort to, between national, state, and community organizations to build partnerships that can leverage to fight suicide among veteran and military uh, 
community. Earlier in the presentations, uh, Danny Eakins was referenced. Uh, he is the policy administrator of the Ohio Department of Veterans Services. Uh, I work with Danny on, on those programs as well. So we participate in the SAMHSA uh, SMBVFTA trainings that uh, was actually referenced in the previous presentation. There was a PowerPoint presentation on them. So to kind of talk about what they are is they serve as the national resource to support states, territories, and local communities and strengthen their capacities to address behavioral needs in military and veteran families. So yesterday I participated in the uh, creating a better workplace environment to support our service members, veterans, and their family training. The, one of the major things they talk about was the Transition Assistance Program, or TAP. So this training provides information, the access to information documents, and training to ensure the service members who are separated from active duty are prepared for the next step in their life. Now, whether pursuing additional education, finding a military job in the private sector, or starting their own business. I personally attended this training back in 2008, and I can tell you that it was great for my transition and it answered a lot of my questions, which helped lead me to take the next step, and that was to join the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation in February of this year. So one of the things that Tony talked about was the Suicide Prevention Plan for Ohio. Now, I am personally part of Strategy 4, and the Strategy 4 mission is Ohio will concentrate prevention efforts on groups that, that current data has identified as high risk for suicide, including veterans and military members. So we are working in conjunction with the Harm and National Guard and their behavioral health professional, which is Major David Kirker. We're also working with the certified mental health first aid instructor, specifically focusing on uh, service members and the veteran population. And the reason why I bring those up is we know obviously in 2020, the major thing is COVID-19. And we know that our current service members in the Army National Guard are isolated and they're experiencing new things as far as their anxiety because they're, they're isolated from their units and their fellow service members. That's why this strategy is incredibly important is helping bridge those gaps between civilian population and the military, specifically the Army National Guard. So we also discussed the required annual suicide prevention training requirements. This training increases awareness of suicide risk factors and warning signs the resources available to prevent suicide and encourage intervention to high risk service members. Earlier in uh, Dr. Ridley's slides, she actually referenced those, although she didn't talk about them. And you, so there was something that said the ASK model, which is the ASK, the ASK and care, I'm sorry, ACE model, the ASK, care and escort to uh, professional help. Uh, we also work with returnal, retired Colonel Julie Black. She is the Director of Family Readiness and Warrior Support for Army National Guard. She is a key member of the Strategy 4 team for the Suicide Prevention Plan for Ohio. Dr. Ridley also is a member of the Strategy 4 team. So that includes my uh, presentation. <laughs> 